Homemade pasta is honestly like next level. Don't be intimidated, don't be afraid. It's easier than you think. Honestly, this is one of those things that you've just gotta try. The only ingredients you need to make pasta dough from scratch are flour, salt, eggs, and extra virgin olive oil. The first big question with homemade pasta is, what type of flour should I use? And you know, it's pretty debated. There's tons of recipes with all purpose, a bunch of double O, a bunch of semolina. Most often times you'll see like half and half. If you prefer that more like al dente bite, that's gonna be more what you wanna do with like a half semolina, half all purpose. We found that it was a little bit harder to work with when you're rolling it out by hand. A really traditional route is to use the double O flour, which is what we're gonna do here. It's just very finely ground. And testing, this one had the best texture for us. It was really nice working with it as well. It gave us like a really smooth, silky dough. And so for that, we do recommend splurging for it. That being said, it can be a little bit hard to find. So, you know, all purpose is something that you have in your pantry at all times, pretty much. The all purpose also gives you like a great texture. It's still gonna give you an awesome result. And so with that said, we actually ended up with two ultimate recipes. So whether you choose double O flour or stick to all purpose, you'll get a great result. So let's get started. We made this recipe to be accessible to everyone, so this is specifically made for people who are rolling their dough out by hand. So it's a little bit softer, it's a little more enriched, and it's got all these great pantry essentials that everyone has, and it's a really, really great beginner's look into making your own pasta. You can still make really delicious pasta with all-purpose or plain flour. To start off, you just need two cups of that with a good pinch of salt, two eggs, six egg yolks. I learned this trick at a restaurant and what's great about this is you can crack a whole bunch of eggs and you can get it done a lot quicker than you know really gingerly trying to go back and forth between the two shells. And here you just do a little shake and the white just comes out between your fingers and it's just a really quick easy way. And lastly just a tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. The oil is optional but especially if you're rolling this out by hand it makes the dough a little bit softer and a lot easier to roll out so that's why we're using it in this recipe. So if you're going to spring for the more traditional double O flour, what you're going to get as a result is a very soft, silky texture to your pasta. And for this one, we're going to use three eggs and five yolks, whereas for the all-purpose, we needed more of that fat to help limit the gluten development and to make the all-purpose dough easier to work with overall. All right, so now it's time to make a mess. You're going to dump your flour out on the board, and using your hands, you're going to make like a large well in the middle, and that well is going to hold our eggs when we slowly incorporate them into the dough. And after doing this a few times and having the eggs fall everywhere, trust us, make the well bigger than you think it needs to be. So incorporate the oil and the eggs and beat them a little bit. You don't want to incorporate any air or anything, you just kind of want to break up the eggs and the yolks. And you're going to carefully pour that into the well. And then slowly whisk the eggs. And what that's going to do is pull a little bit of flour more and more into your dough. And what that's going to do is prevent any large chunks from forming in the dough. And you're gonna use your fork to slowly grab a little bit more of the flour and slowly incorporate the flour into the eggs to gradually thicken the eggs and eventually make it into a dough. But worst case scenario, if you have a breach and the egg starts going everywhere, I think the biggest thing here is just don't panic. Because you still do kind of want to slowly incorporate the flour into the dough. You don't want to just douse it all in there all at once. Once you have almost all the flour incorporated and you're confident that it's all turning into like a much thicker mixture, you can clean off your fork and just start going in with your hands and kneading the dough together. What we're looking for is a nice malleable dough, but not something that's so sticky that it's covering your hands in the dough. You buy eggs, some are larger than others. So if your eggs are really large and you're feeling like your dough is really wet and sticky, that's a really easy fix. You just add a little bit more flour. If your dough is really dry, like if you're using pretty small eggs, the best thing to do is break up another egg with a splash of water so it's kind of thin and then using your hand to kind of sprinkle that egg mixture on. You want to make sure that you're just kind of as evenly as you can getting moisture into the dough and then kneading that in. The biggest mistake when people are making doughs is just not kneading it enough. And this is honestly going to take a good seven to 10 minutes, like set a timer for yourself to make sure that you're doing it long enough. And this is just to develop the gluten and also make sure that you have a very smooth, well incorporated dough. And there's a few different ways to do it. What you're trying to do is get the outside dough incorporated in the center part of the dough. So what I'm doing is kind of lifting and then rolling the dough back on itself. So this way I'm kind of getting all parts of the dough and evenly working it all into itself. You want to be gentle enough that you're not tearing the dough. What you're doing is just folding and rolling. There's also another way to do this and I call this the hard method because um, you kind of end up making a bit of a heart shape on your board when you're done. It's the same idea, you're just rolling and folding, but either way it's kind of the same process of incorporating 
the outside of the dough with the inside of the dough. It's more so just finding a way that works for you and is comfortable for you to be doing so for five to 10 minutes, unless you have a tag team <laughs> for people to help you. And a good signal to know when your pasta dough is done is by poking it. And what you're looking for here is this kind of spring back. You want to see that the dough comes back at you when you poke it. So you're seeing that kind of stretchy quality the gluten is developing. And once we're happy that we've kneaded for long enough, we're going to cover it with cling film and leave it out at room temperature for 30 minutes to an hour. And what that's going to do is allow the gluten to rest a little bit so that when it's time to roll out, it's not going to spring back at you. And at this point, the dough is going to be much softer, much more relaxed. And so it's going to be much easier to roll out now that we let it rest. So we're going to unwrap our dough and then we're going to break it up into pieces to make it, again, easier to work with. And we're going to put the others to the side, covering them with cling film so they don't dry out while we roll out our first piece. So we're going to make like a thick linguine and so we want to roll it out into one long piece. So when you're rolling out pasta dough, it'll start kind of making a really oblong shape. So a way that you can avoid doing that is once you're rolling it out in this long shape, you can fold the top third down and then the bottom third over that. So you're kind of folding it like a letter almost. And then again, continue rolling back and forth, back and forth. It'll help result in a much more even rectangle and be a little bit easier to roll out in an even shape so that there's no waste. And it's also gonna help soften the dough a little bit and make it just that much easier on yourself. You wanna roll this out thinner than you think even. The old saying about pasta dough is you wanna be able to read a love letter through it. But the point is you wanna be able to see your hand through the dough. The reason why you want it to be so thin is when you put it in the boiling water, it's automatically gonna swell a little bit because it is taking on some water. So if it's not thin enough now, you're gonna end up with a really thick pasta. And depending on how exact you want your noodles to look, you can cut off some of the edges. But don't go to crazy lengths trying to get perfectly shaped pasta. This is handmade, it's rustic, you know, it's never going to be as perfect as a machine, but that's kind of the point. So an easy way to make sure that you're getting good cuts here is to roll it up in kind of a large, loose roll. You want the layers to be dry enough that they're not going to stick to each other, and so that way when you cut them, they don't just form into one massive blob. And then you can just make simple cuts depending on the width that you want in your pasta. It's much easier to cut it this way instead of doing long, straight lines. And then you want to immediately kind of fluff out those rolls and put them into their individual strands and put them aside while you make some more. And you can totally cut these to your preference. You can do thinner than this, you can do thicker for pepperdell. Just think about what kind of sauce you're gonna be serving them with or kind of the way that you like your noodles. And if you wanna make the cutest pasta ever, you can cut them into little bow ties and stick to the same thing. You wanna do the roll, you wanna cut long strips, and then you wanna cut those strips into little rectangles. And then all you need to do is take your little index finger and thumb and pinch them in the middle and make the cutest little bow ties around. This one's a little more time consuming, so we wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have a bunch of friends helping you as well. <laughs> but they're so cute that it's worth it. <laughs> There's literally a million ways to cut pasta, so just have fun with it. You know, you've done all the hard work, now is kind of the fun part of shaping it. Also, like, don't go too crazy. It's rustic, it's handmade, it's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna taste great. While you're making all of your shapes, you wanna make sure that you have some extra flour on hand to dust over the finished cut pasta. It's gonna prevent the pasta from sticking to itself, but it's also going to slightly dry it out a little bit, and that's gonna give your final pasta a nice toothy texture. So this pasta is fresh, therefore it's not gonna take nearly as long to cook as dried pasta would. You really just need a few minutes in some salted boiling water and you wanna kinda of break up the pasta before you put it in. And then, you know, give it a nice stir once it's in the water as well. Just like with dried pasta, we wanna make sure that it's not sticking. And moving it around in the boiling water is gonna help prevent that. The only way to know when the pasta's done is to taste it. So after, you know, two or three minutes in the boiling water, give it a taste, see if it's done to your liking, and as always, save a cup or so of the pasta water to help finish off your sauce later. So once you have your strained pasta, you're gonna add it to your sauce with a little bit of pasta water and cheese if you like. Here we use brown butter and sage and a bit of Parmesan. This is honestly a great method. You're gonna get great pasta hand rolling it, but if you do this quite often or this is something that you really get into, it's honestly worth the investment getting a pasta roller. It's gonna be a little bit easier. It's gonna give you a little bit more of an even result. But don't feel like the first time you're making pasta, you have to invest in this $20, $30 machine. Honestly, the satisfaction and the beautiful result of fresh pasta is pretty special. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a few simple ingredients. It's pretty much one of the best things on the planet. There are a few things better than a warm bowl of pasta. So give it a go. Try it on the weekend. Enlist your friends. Make a party out of it and you can't go wrong with a bowl of fresh pasta. Look how beautiful that it's is. Look great. at that pasta. It's pretty great. I am sad we're not eating it right now because we already ate it. God, my husband's lucky to be with oh, me. Oh yeah. <laughs>
I know, I'm really hungry. Like, look at the brown butter bits on that pasta. 